today we've got Dr. Michelle Ross on the program. She's a, she's a very interesting individual. She's into drugs, plants, and making people healthy. So thanks for coming today, Michelle. Thank you so much for having me. I can't wait to uh, talk more about the future. It's so exciting. So the first question, you do a ton with cannabis. What's the story? So actually, I was a hardcore anti-drug scientist. I grew up in front of a crack house in New Jersey, and I never thought I would grow up to be a cannabis scientist. Uh, actually, my very first paper when I was a PhD student was on how cannabinoids could grow brain cells. And so that got the little light bulb, you know, uh, glowing. And it made me think about, well, what else don't we know about cannabinoids and cannabis? Because we've been taught for years that cannabis is bad, that it's one of those illegal drugs of abuse. And in fact, we find that it is so helpful for so many different conditions, especially mental health and neurological conditions. And that actually stimulated my own journey into finding more about it and then using it for my own health. In terms of pharmaceuticals, it's interesting because there are pharmaceutical companies that have been doing cannabinoid research for years. So one of their issues was that it's really difficult to patent a plant. So it's very easy to patent a single chemical. And that's why we've had prescription THC as a Marinol in the United States. We've had prescription CBD but to patent the whole plant is just uh, a no-go in the United States and most countries. And so most pharmaceutical companies haven't been um, going after that. But think about it. Like most Americans have a chronic illness. Most Americans, um, you know, and and I don't know about the other countries, but we're, we're really a sick country here in the U.S. And most people are on multiple prescriptions and it is a cash cow. You know, uh, we don't really worry about getting people off of prescriptions. We give them one prescription and keep laying it on to help manage all their side effects from the drugs we're giving them. And when you have one drug like cannabis that can actually uh, manage multiple symptoms here, you could treat something with just one prescription and it's going to be less costly, um, less dangerous. And in terms of, you know, using a patient as a customer, it's not a very good business model. Fair. So talk to me a little <laughs> bit more about the science of cannabis and the science sure. of some of the drugs you've studied. Sure. So the endocannabinoid system is actually the largest neurotransmitter system in your brain and body. It controls all the other neurotransmitter systems. And to break that down, since I am a neuroscientist, <laughs> you know, I don't want to go over anyone's head. A neurotransmitter is the signal between two brain cells. So that's how they communicate. So be able to send a message to say, okay, I want to move this muscle or I want to, you know, preserve this memory. Whatever is happening in your brain is mediated by these neurotransmitters. So there's all different types of those. There's dopamine, there's serotonin, there's glutamate, there's GABA, there's all these different signals. And all these signals are controlled by the endocannabinoid system. So it's like the fine-tuned dial that decides how much dopamine is released, how much serotonin is released, et cetera. And all those neurotransmitters decide whether you eat, whether you have interested in, whether you're interested in sex, whether you're going to remember something, learn something. It's literally every single piece and process in our body is controlled by the endocannabinoid system with the exception of breathing, which is really fascinating because that's why we can't overdose on cannabis because cannabinoid receptors aren't in the brain region, the brainstem that controls breathing. So opioids kill us because it does depress breathing, but cannabinoids can't kill you because it can never interfere with breathing. So that's, that's an interesting little factoid there, but the endocannabinoid system is just so complex. We're learning all the different receptors that are involved there. We're learning all about our own natural endocannabinoids that bind to these receptors. And, you know, we thought that there was just the cannabinoid type one receptor, CB1 receptor or CB2 receptor. We're finding all these different random receptors.